Good morning and welcome to prayer on Monday of the fourth week of Advent. I'm glad that you could be here. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas up behind me, but not quite yet. We're still on Advent. We've got four candles to light. And as I do that, I'll give you a moment to center yourselves and we'll begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever and ever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of the light and darkness, to you be glory and praise forever and ever. As the sun rises on this new day, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light unto our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Amen. Advent is a time to listen to the prophets, and this fourth week of Advent is no differently as we read multiple times this week from the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 11. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge with what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and with the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its head on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all of my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle, as it has for much of Advent, is a paraphrase of Romans 13. Now is the time to wake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. A reading from John chapter 5. Jesus said to the Jews, 
I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that my Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and yet, and you do not have his word abiding in you, but because you do not believe him whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before my Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believe Moses, you would believe me for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a beautiful morning out here in Cashier. It's a cold one, but as we continue the rest of our prayers, I'm going to adjust my camera so that we can get a glimpse of glory and the light coming into the world. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. this prayer for Advent. O God, our Father, we are preparing to celebrate the birthday of your Son, Jesus Christ. While we recall his coming as a tiny baby in weakness and humility, may we be reminded that one day he will come in power and glory. We make this prayer to you through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you even now in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And I know there's a lot going on in a lot of churches, COVID or no COVID, and this is a prayer for those who work and lead, particularly towards our worship on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and all of us who prepare for the same. Let us pray. Lord, still me, still us. Let our minds be inquiring and searching. Let our hearts be open. Save us from mental rust. Deliver us from spiritual decay. Keep us alive and alert. Teach us that I may teach others. Amen. And this prayer from John Crossan. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare the way before thee, Grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready the way by turning the hearts of all, particularly the disobedient, to the wisdom of the one who is just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight. 
This we pray to you who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. As we have in mind to meditate and pray using the form of the cross, we'll add to the beauty of this world the beauty of music from the Cathedral Choir of St. Philip's in Atlanta. Heavenly Father, at the top of the cross, we make our prayers to you, prayers of thanksgiving and praise for the beauty of this world, for the beauty of music, eyes to see, ears to listen, and hearts to know. We thank you for your Son. We thank you for your Spirit and your Church. We thank you for all believers around the world who prepare their hearts to make room for him that we with heaven and nature will sing. We thank you for friends and family that surround us on every side, all the people, all the churches that have helped to build our faith. We thank you for those working on the front lines, administering vaccines, caring for the sick, restoring them to health, sitting with the grieving. All those scientists and delivery people who have prepared and who are delivering vaccines, we pray and give thanks for their success. We may continue to live and have this light at the end of the tunnel, a light which is just a glimpse of the light of your sun at the end of the tunnel. We thank you for the basics of our lives, for food, for shelter, for water and air, and for the great cycle of life that brings food to our tables and the people that bring food to our tables and to our grocery stores. At the foot of the cross, Lord, even with these hearts of gratitude, we know that they are broken hearts, that we have confessing to do, reconciling to do, and we offer to you our prayers of contrition, our prayers of confession for those things known and unknown, things done and left undone, our individual and private sins, our individual and public sins, our corporate sins, our systemic sins. Lord, help us to see them and give us strength to correct them. And in your name we pray, in your mercy we pray, forgive us. At the center of the cross where your son offered himself to us, for us, we offer ourselves to you this day as children of the light, as your disciples, as those who have been baptized as heirs of your kingdom. We offer ourselves in your service to family and friends, to stranger. This time of year filled with so much hustle and bustle that we can stop and be still and look at the needs of the world around us and to give of our time, to give of our talent, to give of our treasure, so that your joy may be known. On the left arm of the cross, we pray for others. Again, for our families and friends, those who may be too far away to visit or too distant because of the pandemic to visit, but that we can be together in love and grace with them spiritually. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are dying and those who tend to them. We pray for leaders around the world and in this country and in our states and towns, whether they're elected or appointed, making decisions for health and welfare and well-being and for the common good. And lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves our hearts, our minds, our souls and bodies that we may truly prepare, that we may keep our eyes on the light, that we may seek and serve you in all people, loving one another as you have loved us. 
Help us to heed and follow the words that we have heard in scripture today, this wisdom, knowing the shoot that comes from Jesse, knowing the Messiah who is coming into the world, and we will make it ourselves, our lives, sell souls and bodies to him this day and always. Amen. One final prayer. May God the Father who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son give you grace to prepare for eternal life. May God the Son who comes to us as redeemed and judge reveal to you the path that leads from darkness to light. And may God the Holy Spirit by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ help you to bear the fruits of holiness. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great Monday. Have a great last week of Advent and ready yourselves for the coming of Christ. God bless.